a little bit. And now the human kingdom, the human kingdom takes it another step forward and further in that the human kingdom has the ability to think. And it is the ability to think, the possession of mind, which distinguishes the human being, again, from the subhuman being. And what accounts for the ability to think in the human being is an aspect in man's spiritual constitution, which is occultly called the thinker. The thinker is an ancient term to reference the soul. What distinguishes the human being from the animal is that the human being has gone through the occult process known as individualization, which makes us individual souls, which gives us individuality, which gives us a sense of I-ness, which gives us self-consciousness, which gives us the consciousness or the ability to grow conscious of self as an expression of God. Animals, on the other hand, form part of group souls. Did you ever wonder why a flock of birds flies through the air in some kind of formation? Or why herds of animals have a tendency to move at the same time into the same direction? And often they do it really fast. It's because animals form part of group souls, whereas the human being is an individual soul, and the individualizing principle is mind. Mind is the tool we employ to think. And the ability to think, again, is the mark of humanhood. This is what makes us human. And interestingly enough, and I'm certain this is no coincidence, but interestingly enough, in Latin, the word mens, spelled M-E-N-S, like man in plural with S, <laughs> translates as mind. And in Sanskrit, the verbal root man, M-A-N, spelled like man, like human, translates as to think. So mind, the ability to think, this is the mark of humanhood. Well, you may ask yourself, why are we having this discussion? What does the question of consciousness in the various kingdoms that exist that live on this planet have to do with planetary world service? Well, it has everything to do with it. We just had this little discussion about the question of consciousness as it is expressed in the various kingdoms on earth for three reasons. First, to create awareness for the responsibility which is ours, for the responsibility which is man's, having been employed by spirit with the ability to think, and the responsibility that comes along with the ability to think that we have towards the animal, plant, and mineral kingdoms who do not have the ability to think. It is to create awareness for man's responsibility towards the, in, towards the animal, plant, and mineral kingdoms in the sense that we are to serve as their caretakers and look at them as our younger brothers and sisters. And secondly, we just had this little discussion to create awareness for the fact that animals are not just a piece of meat. Animals have consciousness. Animals have, are responsive to feelings and emotions, and they even think to a certain degree, even if the ability to think within the animal kingdom is mainly expressed through what we call instinct, but animals do possess consciousness, or else they wouldn't have a brain, or they wouldn't have a nervous system. And so we need to respect, we need to treat our animal brothers and sisters with greater respect. And thirdly, we just had this little discussion to create awareness for the significance of mind. 
So what is so special about mind? What is so great about the ability to think? What is so significant about the ability to think that I make such a big fuss about it? What is so great about the ability to think that I go all the way to explain how minerals do not think, how plants do not think, how the animal kingdom thinks a little bit, and how the human kingdom is the one and only kingdom currently stationed on planet Earth who has the ability to truly think, who has been endowed by spirit, who has been crowned by spirit with the ability to think. So what is so great about the ability to think? Is it much to do about nothing? Or is it much to do about something? <laughs> Well, with the ability to think comes responsibility. Why? Because our thoughts create our reality. Why? Because every thought we think is a lens we see through. Why? Because we each, in truth, see with our minds. Why? <laughs> Because we each, in truth, are electric beings. Really? <laughs> But what does the one have to do with the other? What does the ability to think have to do with being an electric being? What does being an electric being have to do with thinking? <laughs> with thoughts? Well, let me ask you, what is thought? What is a thought? Each of us has an enormous number of thoughts running through our minds and consciousness every moment of our lives. But interestingly enough, hardly anybody thinks about thought. What is thought? Well, from a scientific point of view, given today's state of development and available terminology, and given my humble understanding, I would think it is correct to say that thought is an electric wave. Thought is an electric wave, and we are electric beings. Thought is an electric wave, and we are electric beings. We are embodied thought. We are the embodiment of the totality of all the thoughts we have ever thought. We, as electric beings, are the electric embodiment of all the electric thoughts we have ever thought. Our thoughts create our reality, Every thought we think is a lens we see through and we each in truth see with our minds because every thought we think with our lower concrete mind as against the higher abstract mind with which you're not dealing right now but every thought we think with our lower concrete mind which is the mind we employ on this plane of reality so every thought we think with our lower concrete mind creates a concrete, definite thought form. And that is why in occult thought, we don't speak about thoughts, we speak about thought forms. And so every thought we think with our lower concrete mind creates or builds a thought form. And so the totality of all the thoughts we think creates our own personal thought form creation. And so we each end up seeing our own thoughts because we are electric beings and thought is an electric wave. And so by continually thinking thoughts with our lower concrete mind, we continually build a lower concrete thought form creation or world through which we end up seeing our own reality. And so in a sense, each one of us ends up seeing our own thoughts and we each end up living in truth through our or in our own subjective reality.